Okay, we are in lesson 10.6, almost done with chapter 10. We've got three theorems in this lesson. I'm going to teach you those three theorems in this video, and then we'll do some examples in a second video. So, each of these theorems are in your book. They're kind of long. The first theorem, this is uh, theorem 10.14, and then there's a 10.15 and 10.16. Uh, in your book, this one's three and a half lines long. Some of the other ones are like five lines long. I'm going to read them to you out of your book. Don't try to write them down. We don't copy them down. I'm going to explain to you a much shorter way of doing each of them. This one says, if two chords intersect in the interior of a circle, we can see that happening here. This is a chord. This is a chord. They are intersecting here in the interior. Then the product of the lengths of the segments of one chord is equal to the product of the lengths of the segments of the other chord. So basically we're going to be doing some multiplying. That's what products means. So how are we going to do this a little bit shorter than that? Very simple. Let's explain why this works. If I draw this chord and this chord here, we have triangles. This angle is congruent to this angle because this angle is half of this arc. We learned that the other day. This inscribed angle is half of its intercepted arc. That angle is also half of the exact same arc, so they are equal to each other. This angle is congruent to this angle because they are both half of this inscribed arc. We can do vertical angles if we want to. We don't really need to. Two angles congruent to two angles makes my triangle similar. And as soon as I have similar triangles, what can we do with the sides? We can set up a proportion. So you could do A over C equals B over D. Or you could work this way, A over B equals C over D. Or you could work this way from right to left, B over A equals D over C. You could stand on your head for all I care and do it upside down, C over A equals D over B. Any of them will work. What you cannot do is put A over D and B over C are not moving in the same direction. When we did A over C equals B over D, we were moving in the same direction, this direction, A over C, B over D. With A over B equals C over D, we were moving in this direction, A over B equals C over D. With B over A uh, equals D over C, we were moving this direction. And then with C over A equals D over B, we were moving this direction. All right, so we can set up a proportion. We cross multiply any of these. If you look at any of them, we're gonna get CB equals AD, okay? CB equals AD, CB equals AD, CB equals AD. They all give us the same exact thing. So that's how we're gonna solve those. All right, that's the first theorem, theorem 10.14. Theorem 10.15 is the next one. It looks something like this. We have what are called secant segments, okay? Secant segments, okay? A secant line is a line that intersects a circle twice. The segment, we just kind of stop the thing here and here, and then we work off of that. Here's what the theorem in your book says. This, by the way, is theorem 10.15. All right? It says if two secant segments share the same endpoint, that's out here, outside a circle, then the product, so we're going to be multiplying again, the product of the lengths of one secant segment and its external segment equals the product of the lengths of the other secant segment and its external segment. What in the world are they saying? All right, this is how we're going to do this one. WSS times ESS equals WSS times ESS. Okay, now what in the world do all those letters mean? Your book took five lines. I wrote it down in 12 letters and a couple symbols. Let's talk about this. WSS stands for the whole secant segment. Whole, W-H-O-L-E. Whole secant segment. And then ESS is the external secant segment. Okay, so what in the world do we mean by that? Well, in this picture, the whole secant segment is this, A plus B. And we're going to multiply that by the external part, which is the B. And then the other whole secant segment is C plus D, and the external part is the D. And we keep that in parentheses so we know we're going to be multiplying. When it said product in our book, product means multiplication. So this is that we're going to use our distributive property. On one of these, it'll probably both be numbers. So maybe like this is an 8 and a 12 and we add and get 20. Then we don't really have to distribute there. We'll see some examples of that in the second video. So this is the main thing you need to memorize right here. This WSS times ESS equals WSS times ESS. If you understand that and you make sure you add, all right, then you're going to be fine on this one. It's a whole lot easier than those five lines in your book. Okay, so that's your second theorem. And then your third theorem is theorem 10.16. And it looks kind of the same as 10.15 with a slight change. Okay, and that's up here that we don't have a secant segment anymore. We have a tangent segment. 
Okay? So this one's about four and a half lines long in your book. It's kind of long again. If a secant segment, that's this one, and a tangent segment intersect at a point outside the circle, or they say share an endpoint outside a circle, then the product, once again we're multiplying, of the lengths of the secant segment and its external segment equals the square of the length of the tangent segment. What in the world? Same idea though. WSS times ESS equals... Well, this isn't a, a WSS or an ESS, it's a tangent segment, so we're just going to write TS. But I have to multiply it by something. Here I multiplied, so here I have to multiply. Well, I have to multiply it by what? The only thing here to multiply it by is itself. So TS times TS, or easier, TS squared. So once again, whole secant segment, external secant segment tangent segment. So how does that look if we write it down with the whole thing? We'd have to add again. So B plus C times the external part B equals the tangent segment squared. So that is our theorems in this lesson. We'll come back with a second video and we'll do examples. So make sure you understand these things. WSS times ESS equals TS squared. WSS let me move that up so it's in view. All right, WSS times ESS equals WSS times ESS. Do not set up proportions on this one. If you do A over C equals B over D, you're automatically going to get this one wrong. But this is the one where you're going to set up proportions. Okay? Don't move in opposite directions. So always make sure you're moving in a consistent direction when you set up your proportion. That's it for lesson 10.6 as far as theorems go.